kindly be seated let us pray our gracious heavenly father we thank you for this pleasant day we thank you for the holy hour that you have ordained us to devote upon your scriptures we thank you for the various ministries of this church we thank you for raising up eminent people to serve the church and especially this congregation help us to be inspired and lend our shoulders for the ministries of this congregation we ask in the name of our lord amen i know of a young christian who had a passion to serve alcoholics he he used to distribute tracts at a couple of liquor shops alcoholics reacted in various ways some used to abuse him some used to slap him some used to tear the tracks and throw at him some who were very drunk will just come and fall upon him and cry their heart out but perceiving that years of his ministry did not have any impact on the situation he moved on to some other ministry especially children's ministry after some time crossing that location he found another elderly person distributing facts inquiring the elder said to him my son was killed in an accident when he was drunk the police gave me his belongings and this tract was in his pocket he was not in his senses to read this if he had he would be alive so i wanted to continue this ministry both of them joined together and they have formulated a mission for the alcoholics in between pondicherry and kadalore where alcoholism is rampant and they minister not only for alcoholics but also for the families and especially for the girl children the theme for this sunday is a ministry of the laity this day is a day to thank all the lay people who have ministered to this congregation and also to the wider church and to encourage lay people to get involved in the ministry of the church ministry of the laity is a great gift from god and this gift at some point of time in the church's history had to be fiercely fought for and restored during the medieval times all the ministry of the church was appropriated by the priests of the catholic church and all the ministries including health and education was done through convents and monasteries eminent lay people lay theologians like martin luther in germany ulrich zwingli in switzerland john calvin in france stood up against the sidelining of laity from the ministry of the church martin luther called it the babylonian captivity of the church the very reformation movement was a movement of the lay people there is a saying that the bible was chained to the altar in the catholic church and that it was brought to the pulpit by martin luther and it was taken to the streets by john wesley what was the preserve of the priests in the roman catholic church namely the reading of the scriptures was opened and given to all the common people by martin luther's a translation of bible in the lingua franca of his day everyone began to read the bible and it was john wesley the founder of methodism who broke the confines of the bible from within the four walls of the church and brought it to the streets to reach the lowest rung of the humanity through his street preaching but it was not as straight and as simple as that there were countless inquisitions 
inquisitions by the church, condemnations, and the burning at the stakes for the translation of the Bible and the involvement of the laity in the ministry. All this had to happen before the change could come in the church. I told you that during the medieval period, the lay people were sidelined by the Catholic Church. It also happened during the biblical times. During the late Old Testament times, during the intertestamental times when between the book of Malachi and the first book in New Testament, and during the first century, we read Ezra and Nehemiah recording the return of the Judean captives from their Babylonian captivity. The Persian king Cyrus, when he defeated Babylonians, he sent back the captives whom the Babylonian empires have brought to Babylonia. When he sent the Judeans back, he did not send the king and the courtiers but he only sent back people led by the priests carrying the vessels of the temple and money to build the temple because the Persian king did not want Judea to become a political entity again but he wanted Judea to live only as a religious community. The temple was built, worship had begun and then the priests began to regulate and dominate every aspect of the communal life. It was so during hundreds of years. And during the first century, there arose a young layman, a dynamic young person, to confront the priests of Judea. Guess who? That dynamic young lay person was Jesus. Jesus was not a priest. Neither did he require priests to serve the kingdom of God. Through and through, the kingdom of God was a lay movement. Later, the early church began as the ministry of the laity. All the ministries that were listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 28 are lay ministries, and I read. And God appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, and various kinds of tongues. All these were lay ministries. I would also like to draw your attention to the significant contribution that the lay people have done to the spread of the gospel during the first century. Acts chapter 7, we see a severe persecution was let loose by the Jews upon the early Christians. Acts chapter 8 verses from one following reports how all the believers were scattered throughout the land of Judea and also in Samaria. Those people who ran did not run for their lives, did not run only to save their lives, but they also ran with gospel on their lips. Listen to 8.4. Those who were scattered from place to place, those who were scattered went from place to place proclaiming the word. And again read in Acts chapter 11 verses 19 to 21 about those who were scattered due to the persecution and how they brought the gospel to the main Greek land. What a great testimony to the ministry of the laity who turned their persecution into an opportunity to carry the gospel among the nations. Today we have a beautiful narrative in the whole testament. 
Samaria was besieged by Syria. People living within the walled city were dying of starvation. There were four leprous persons who were abandoned outside the city gates to die. And they, knowing that they cannot go into the city, else the Samaritans would stone them to death. They wanted to take a chance of going and begging for food at the Syrian camp. When they were going, the Lord made the Syrians to hear the sound of a large enemy galloping towards them to uh, overrun them. The Syrians fled, leaving behind a lot of food and gold and silver in their camps. When the lepers saw the bounteous food in the camp, see what they resolved. Second Kings 7, 9. This is a day of good news. If we are silent and wait until the morning, we will be found guilty. Therefore, let us go and till the king's household. They know that during this night, the people in Samaria will be falling dead due to starvation. And they also know that these are the people who locked them out of the city to, be, to die of starvation because they are people with leprosy. Nevertheless, the good news of life cannot be kept to oneself. It has to be told. What a beautiful illustration for the ministry of the laity. And here, the good news to marvel is that God can use anyone, whatever be his or her condition or status in life, to be the bearer of the good news of life. There is also another beautiful quality of ministry that we learn from these persons of leprosy. They call out to the gatekeeper in chapter 7, verse 10. And then we do not hear about them. Those four persons with leprosy disappeared from the scene after informing the good news. We do not know what happened to them. The ministry of the church for ages is built upon such a kind of sacrificial ministers among the lay people who, after doing what they can, after accomplishing their call for ministry, and after passing on the mantle to the next generation, just disappear from the scene. Losing oneself in ministry of the church has always been the hallmark of the ministry of the laity. Dearly beloved, the Lord Jesus Christ was a lay person. His kingdom of God was staffed by non-literate lay people. The church began as a lay movement. The ministry of the laity was a hallmark of Protestant Christianity. The Reformation movement laid strong foundations for the ministry of the laity. Methodist Church is a church of the laity. Do not ever allow Anglicanism to swallow this tradition of lay ministry. Carrying on the mission of the gospel is a great burden that is upon the shoulders of the church and the laity. Lay people are called to lend their shoulders and share this burden. And the good news to marvel is that God can use anyone, whatever be her or his position in life or status, to be the bearer of the good news of life. 